What's up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to another tutorial. So today we're going to be doing a pretty simple effect, but it's a pretty cool effect. We're going to create this kind of like wavy landscape effect. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, uh, but the reason I'm kind of showing you guys is because I really struggled to get this effect just because of the fact that I was using Octane and Octane Scatter and I just could not get the effect. So instead of using Octane Scatter, because Octane Scatter won't work, we're going to be using a cloner. And so yeah, I'll just guide you through this process. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and hope you have fun. So yeah, let's get started. Cool, so let's start off with a plane over here. We can just make this a little bigger. Let's press NB just to get our lines over here. It's not necessary, but just to make sure that it's like even spacings over here. Cool. Let's go over here and add in a formula effect. Uh, let's put that as a child of this and bring that back. So let's first of all make this a one and a one. Um, this one over here changes the speed, the, the frequency of the waves, and then this one over here changes the height of the waves. So we don't want it to be too big and we don't want it to be too fast either. Cool, so let's bring this down in now a bit. And so like that, maybe just a little bit wider. Something along those lines. Something like that works out. I do want the waves to be just a bit bigger. Something like that. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's just bring this up a bit so that we're not going through the floor over there. Cool. And then let's go over here into our settings and change this to Octane Render. So the main reason that we're changing it uh, to Octane Render compared to the normal standard render is so that when we're bringing in assets from Bridge, because most of this effect is done with just downloading a whole bunch of assets from Bridge, it'll bring them in with actual Octane textures instead of just the default standard 4D material. Same thing applies if you're using Redshift or any other renderer, you just change it in the render settings and the mega scans will change it. Cool. So let's go over here let's get some grass three plants um, this should be fine there's no right way of doing this i mean there's a whole bunch of grass assets so i guess go through and see which one you guys like the most uh, i don't need so many variations so i'm gonna delete most of these i think i only need like four should be fine over here and then let's put them in a cloner um so yeah let me first show you why we're using a cloner instead of a scatter so you would think if we're doing something like this in octane it would make more sense to use a octane scatter but let me show you why it doesn't work so uh let me just do this with some cylinders so over here uh wrong one. something like that let's put this in octane scatter change this to surface and put this plane as the surface so octane scatter works really well if the surface is kind of staying the same but if the surface is moving octane scatter will kind of glitch out so let me just go here and it works perfectly fine over here but it doesn't usually work perfectly fine let me just throw in something like this Okay, now you can kind of see what I'm talking about over here. The things are kind of uh, jumping in and out. So it might look fine over here, but you'll notice that if I had to actually render this out, there'll be a whole bunch of like jumping here and there. Uh, I'm not too sure why it does it, uh, but unfortunately Octane Scatter just does not work. So yeah, we're gonna be using the cloner. So with the cloner over here, let's change this to render instance mode, change it to object over here, and then set the object to the plane. And now when we press play, they'll stay on it and there will be no glitching around. Cool, so you'll notice that everything is kind of facing this direction. I have no idea why it does that, but it's, it always does that for some reason. And let's just go here, put in minus 90. And now they're facing the correct, uh, the correct way. Yeah, oh, I think, or you could just turn off this align clones. I think that also would, yeah, that seems like that also solves that problem. Oh, nope, nope, you need to align the clones so that it actually stays on it. Uh, okay, minus 90. And now it stays on the texture. Cool, I mean on the plane over here. 
Awesome, let's go over here. Let's just add in just a few more over here. And let's go into the transform and maybe make this a little bit smaller because they are kind of big. We're gonna go over here to MoGraph, Effector, and Random. Let's turn off the Y position and maybe make this take 10 and 10. In rotation, let's set this to 360 degrees. And up here, like 10 and 10 as well, just so there's slight variations in it. So what we've done over here so far is pretty much what we're gonna do just now multiple times. Cool, so I've just got a few other assets over here. I've got this branch and I've got two variations of a rock. One's a small one, one's a big one, just so that we have some variations. And so now what we're gonna do is the exact same thing that we did with the grass, but now with these. So let's go over here, put them in a cloner. Uh, to do that, you just kind of select the objects that you want and hold down Alt and it will put them in a cloner. Cool, so let's just start over here. Let's go with these rocks. And same thing, render instance, object mode, and plane. Cool, and I think we're gonna have to do the exact same thing over here again and set this to minus 90 in the transform. Let's just make sure it's working. And yeah, they're staying on there. You can always raise them up a little bit if they're like kind of going below the surface. And with the selected, let's go over here, MoGraph, Effector, and Random. So let's just do it where it's like kind of ordered like this. You'll notice that uh, if you're holding down, if you select the cloner over here and then you add any sort of MoGraph effect, it will only be applied to that specific cloner. You'll see over here with these other ones, they're not applied. Cool. Let's do that again now with this rock. Although with this, we need to change this to be a lot smaller. Maybe 0 0.3. 0 0.3 looks quite good. Let's go object, plane, render instance. And with this one, I think we only need like 10. And let's just change up the seed a bit. We'll be messing with the seed uh, a decent amount, like later on when we're actually getting to like the general look of what we're going for. But yeah, something like this should work for now. And then let's add in our branches over here. Some of the thing, let's just make this a little bit smaller. Rinse and repeat, object mode, instance, and plane over here. Minus 90. Oh yeah, let's do it with the rock as well. So that they're facing the right direction. With rock selected, random. Just so we got some variations. And same thing over here with these branches. Although with the branches, I don't think we need that many. So maybe like five should be fine. And let's just kind of see what. Mm. Maybe we can always change this up later on. Uh, maybe some like that. Also, let's make this point three. So a little bit big over there. And now when we press play, they'll all work together and they'll all kind of flow along with it. Cool. So let's see what this looks like. Let's just also add a little bit more grass over here. Let's make 1000. And because it's still on render instance, it should still run quite nicely. Let's go over here into our render view. And yeah, that does not look very nice, but that's what we're going to do now and make it look nice. So. Let's just search for a ground texture. Something like this should be fine. And let's add that to the plane. Let's go in here. Just auto arrange that. And let's just make this smaller. So like that, that looks, that looks good. So I don't know if you guys are having the same problem, but whenever I export from mega scans here, the displacement map always comes in and it always looks like shit. So yeah, I mean, the only way that I could figure out of fixing this is just to, uh, just to 
branch up here, yeah, is just to go into it. For some reason it's red. No idea why it's red, but it's red for some reason. So just going in over here, changing the displacement over here, and that just seems to fix the problem. So yeah, if you guys are having that exact same problem, it's as simple as just going in here and swapping out the displacement. Cool. Okay, so let's make a duplicate of this cross and let's just apply it to some of these here and let's go over here and add in a octane daylight just rotate it up like this and just rotate it to the side so that we get these kind of these nice shadows over here cool mode uh, view settings. You guys don't have to do this. I just like doing this so that I kind of know exactly what I'm working with so I can just see over there and from this I think actually with the formula let's maybe raise this up a bit something like that just so we can get deeper shadows over there. You can also just lower the sun a bit and yeah that looks quite nice. It looks quite realistic but I wasn't really going for a realistic look. I was going for something a little bit more surreal and a lot of the time when you're going for a surreal look the main thing is literally just changing the colors so what i did with my render is that i just removed the albedo channel over here and i just added my own colors over here i think i went for like this kind of orange effect orangey color That, and then just change this other one over here. Yeah, so this part of the process is a lot of trial and error, trying to find the correct colors and the correct look. So yeah, I, I would suggest spending a little bit more time on this step and actually finding colors that you think actually suit the look that you're going for. But yeah, because I mean, these colors over here, they ain't the one, I'm not gonna lie. But let's, I don't know, let's change it up. Let's make it, oh, that, that pink look quite nice. I mean, I just saw it in there. I, I don't know if it will actually work. Um, I guess something like that kind of works. I don't like the length of these, so let's go over here and transform. And let's just bring this down a bit. Let's maybe make all of this 0.5. And then just increase this to maybe 2000. 2000 over there. To be honest, I really don't like these colors. I think when I was doing my render initially, I spent quite a decent amount of time just going through different color variations just to try to find a kind of color palette that I felt looked nice. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna spend too much time this time around doing that uh, just because I feel like it's a waste because you know, everyone has a different opinion on stuff. So I feel like it's worth the time to like go through and change all of this i say that but yet i'm still doing it kind of looks like um sully from monsters incorporated uh so yeah if you're going for a sully from monsters incorporated look this is this is how you get it um yeah i'm glad, glad i could help cool let's also another thing you could do is also just change the hue it's like a thing that I love to do with my renders sometimes. It's literally just changing the hue. It gives it a really cool effect. You can get some like really weird colors out of it. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the best way of doing it, but it is a way of doing it. And yeah, it makes it kind of fun. Uh, with this random here, let's also change the scale of these just because we don't want them all to be uniform. Uh, well, no, we want them to be uniform here, but not so all more. Let's um, actually minus 0.5, something like that should work. 
Let's do the same thing with these rocks over here. Uniform scale, 0.5. Let's actually make that one because they're the smaller rocks. Let's actually do more of them. Something like that. Um, why are these floating in the air? Oh, that's why. Cool. Again, with this, I don't like the scale of it. It's too big. 0.3. Seems like 0.3 is the way for everything. And let's make this maybe 5,000. It should still run nicely, seeing as though we're using render instance. If you were using instance mode, your computer would probably be crashing at this point. Uh, yeah, so parameters, scale, I think these are the, these are the rocks. They are the rocks. Let's do that. Um, and let's change up the seed because, I don't know, it doesn't look very cool. Yeah, this is another thing that you have to do because it's such a simple technique i think most of the time you're going to spend is by just doing what i'm doing over here just kind of scrolling through different variations of how to like arrange everything just to get like a kind of nice composition and constantly changing the colors because it just never looks good <laughs> at least that's the thing that i'm struggling with the most it seems like in this render it's just trying to get it to i don't know look satisfying to the eye um, but yeah let's go in here let's also change this up a bit just so that we can get a pretty decent look here that was quite nice in fact let's just raise up these highlights here or we'll actually compress the highlights and i think i use this control it's one of my favorite like LUTs from like the default ones. I just think they it has like a very really nice look to it. And now when we press play, everything stays together and wobbles with everything else. So yeah, sorry that this wasn't the best tutorial in my opinion, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I think what I did over here is pretty much what I did in my render. I just spent a little bit more time messing with the actual colors and the actual composition of it with the, the rocks and the branches and stuff. So you'll see over here with, this was my final composition uh, when it came to my render. Uh, obviously this will be in my Patreon. So if you guys are interested in, you know, what I did up here, you can get that in my Patreon, but it's the exact same technique of what I just showed you guys. So yeah, if you, feel like supporting the channel you're more than welcome to support me on patreon but if not yeah i always just appreciate the support uh, a like and a subscribe always goes a long way but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial it wasn't the most in-depth or crazy tutorial but i mean i hope you had fun and learned something on the way but yeah i'll check you guys next week cheers